Hello viewers and welcome to Noble Tech. In today's video we're diving into the best Flipper Zero boards of 2025. These aren't just spec sheets. I've tested them, flashed them, and in some cases nearly bricked them. So if you're building payloads, sniffing signals, or you just want to expand your flipper's capabilities, this roundup is for you. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's take a look at the Rabbit Lab's Gemini Dream. What is the Gemini Dream, dear here you ask? The Gemini Dream is a twin CC1101, so that's 433 MHz and 900 MHz external sub gigahertz module for the Flipper Zero. And as you can see, you get to add external antennas. Now, the reason for this is that the Flipper Zero itself doesn't have any way to attach external antennas. So what you need to do is attach an additional board, such as this one with additional CC1101 chips, which then attach to external antennas. So the reason for this is that the Flipper Zero itself doesn't have any way of attaching external antennas. So then what you need to do is get an external board like this one, which has external CC1101 chips, which then attach to external antennas. For full disclosure, Rabbit Lab sent me the Gemini Dream and the Ghost ESP board for review. We'll be looking at the Ghost ESP board shortly. The Gemini Dream comes with either the little small antennas, but it also comes with these rather, let's see if I can get them on camera here, these rather impressive long antennas here for boosted signal there. Right, so you can either get it with the small antennas, the large antennas, or both. Going over to the Rabbit Labs website, we can see that the price range is from £35.48 to £50.59. So for those choice options, you've got just the Gemini, which comes in at 3548 Add the small antennas for 4181 You can add the high gain antennas for £44.41. And then for both combined, you can get it for £50.59. And and the design of the PCB is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion, with the Rabbit Lab silk screening on the front, and then you have the Gemini Twin silk screen on the back. This board is absolutely beautiful. And also you can see here we have a switch. In the middle is the neutral position. You can go over to the left for 433.92 MHz, and then you can go over to the right for 900 MHz. Scrolling down to the description section of the website, we can see that our favorite case maker, Tron Cases, also makes a case for the Gemini Dream. Now my camera's not going to do it justice here, but this is the case for the Gemini Dream. It comes in two parts. You've got the top cover, which just simply clicks on, and then once it's clicked on, it goes into this slider case, which comes with a pin protector. So to demonstrate the Gemini Dream, first of all, I'm going to plug the board into the Flipper Zero. Once we've plugged in the Gemini Dream, we're going to go over to the GPIO options menu. We're going to scroll down to 5 volts on the GPIO, and we're going to turn that to on. Activate. And then we flick the switch here. We can see that the light is now on for 433 MHz. Go back to the Flipper Zero menu, and now we're going to go down to sub gigahertz. Once we're on the sub gigahertz menu, we're going to scroll down to saved. And I'm just going to use the built-in files here that's in Momentum. So we're going to go for the Tesla. You can see we've got two European options for myself as I'm in the UK. So before I hit send, I'm just going to bring over my trusty HackRF H4M. And we're going to scroll down to capture. So as you can see, the HackRF H4M is already set to 433.92 megahertz on the capture. So when I click send on the flipper zero, from the Gemini Dream, we can see that we have a really strong signal here, taking up most of the screen for that red band. It's quite impressive, but now let's have a look at what it looks like with just the internal Flipper Zero antenna. Now if I click send now, you can see that the signal is no longer anywhere near as strong. This isn't a perfect demonstration as the distances are relatively close. But hopefully that does demonstrate that using the Gemini board, it definitely boosts the signal strength of your sub gigahertz signal. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Ghost ESP Revival board by Rabbit Labs. As you can see, this is the latest revision with the green PCB and the beautiful silk screen of the Ghost and the little Rabbit Labs Rabbit logo. So much like the Rabbit Labs Phantom, which I reviewed in a previous video, this board runs on an ESP32 chip and is designed to run Ghost ESP for your Flipper Zero. So Ghost ESP is a bit like Marauder firmware in that it allows you to do Wi-Fi and Bluetooth reconnaissance. 
and I don't know if you can quite see that, but we have GPIO ports on the end, so you can also add a GPS module, so you can also war drive with this device. I really like the look of this board, but I think it needs something. How about a case by Tron Cases? This is the Ghost ESP Revival Board Case by Tron Cases. It adds protection while you're out and about, and it's also a really nice fit. On the back of the board, we can see that there is a special thanks to the developers of Ghost ESP, which is Deki, Play to be Real, and Malish. And also we can see that there is an SD card slot and the aforementioned GPIO ports, which you can add a GPS module to. Going over to Rabbit Lab's website, we can see that the Ghost ESP is priced between £47.42 and £72.62. And, and you can order as just the Ghost ESP board, or you can also get it with the 32GB SD card, or the 32GB SD card and GPS. And again to note that Rabbit Lab sent me the Ghost ESP Revival board for review. So demonstrating the Ghost ESP board, first we're going to plug that into the Flipper Zero. Once plugged in, we're going to go to Apps on the Flipper Zero, then select GPIO, and here we have Ghost ESP for the Flipper Zero. Now to note, you have to download and install the Ghost ESP app for the Flipper Zero separately, as it doesn't come included with Momentum. And here we have the menu for Ghost ESP. As you can see, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. Now I don't have the GPS module to show, but we have Wi-Fi, and with Wi-Fi we have options for scanning and probing, packet capture, attacks, evil portal and network, stop all Wi-Fi. So in the Wi-Fi commands we have scanning and probing, packet capture, attacks, evil portal and network, and then we have the option to stop all Wi-Fi activity. In Bluetooth commands we have scanning and detection, again we have packet capture, attacks and spoofing, and then stop all Bluetooth activity. And in the GPS menu, you have GPS info, start war driving, and Bluetooth war driving, and then stop all GPS activity. And then lastly, in the set menu, we have a couple of settings here for configuration, hardware, and then we can capture app info. And also the option to reboot ESP and clear log files, as well as NVS and PCAPs and clear war drive results. Much like the Marauder firmware, both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth commands include attacks, which include beacon spam and deauthentication, including a lot of other options as well. For more details on Ghost ESP firmware's capabilities, check out my previous video on the Rabbit Labs Phantom, which I go through the menu in more detail. The last board from Rabbit Labs that I wanted to show you today was the Rabbit Labs Master Blaster. This is a external board for infrared, which gives you incredible range. So if you want to turn off a TV from a distance, you can. As you can see, the board also has a silk screen on the front, which says, who runs Flipper Town with what looks like a pirate, but I might be mistaken there. And as you can see here, just in the middle, we have an array of infrared LEDs. And on the back, we have the Rabbit Labs logo, and it's designed by Terrabbit. So what does the Master Blaster do? It expands the power of the Flipper Zero's infrared capabilities and includes 12 infrared high-intensity LEDs with specific focus to create a beam of high-intensity infrared light. This blaster had its infrared LED placement designed specifically to allow for the addition of a lens to further improve performance. And lastly, just to point out, there's a little button here on the board, so when it's plugged into the Flipper Zero, you can test if there's power going through. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Tron Cases for sending me this board to have a look at. This channel has been supported by Tron Cases since the very beginning, and I just want to give a big heartfelt thank you. In a future video, I will figure out a way of demonstrating on camera the capabilities of this little infrared board. I also just wanted to show you this Rabbit Labs SD card that I've not taken out of the packaging yet because it looks so beautiful, I just daren't ruin it. But Rabbit Labs also do a range of SD cards with absolutely stunning artwork on them. In this case, this is the 8GB card with a really crazy looking mad scientist rabbit on there. The packaging, the SD card itself, really impressive. And as you can see, I've not opened it yet just because of how pretty it is. So next up, I want to look at one of the latest Flipper Zero boards to come out, which is the Just Call Me Coco Marauder C5 adapter for the Flipper Zero. The Marauder C5 adapter provides the necessary hardware for you to run the Marauder firmware on your ESP32 C5 dev kit C-1 and control it from your Flipper Zero, offering the ability to access not just 2.4 GHz, but 5 GHz Wi-Fi analysis capabilities. This adapter board includes everything you need to access all of the Marauder features you know and love. Simply flash the Marauder firmware to your dev kit, plug the dev kit into your adapter, and plug the adapter into your Flipper Zero. 
The features include Flipper Zero compatible header pins, an onboard GPS module located in the top here which allows for war driving, a micro SD card slot, dual row dev kit header for expandable hardware, and activity status LEDs, as well as a beautiful protective enclosure designed by AWOC Dynamics, which you can see just at the bottom there. But I won't go into too much detail in this video as I've already published a video going through a full review and a firmware installation of this board, which I'll leave a link to in the description. The Marauder C5 adapter by Just Call Me Coco really is a game changer because it's one of the first boards apart from the BW16 which allows you to do dual band Wi-Fi reconnaissance on the go with your Flipper Zero. But unlike the BW16 boards, the Marauder C5 adapter by Just Call Me Coco is designed specifically to work with the ESP32 Marauder app on the Flipper Zero. Going over to Just Call Me Coco's website, we can see that the Marauder C5 adapter sells for a very low price of $30, but is currently sold out, but we expect another drop to come soon. Also from Just Call Me Coco is the Flipper Zero BFFB, which stands for Big Effing Flipper Board. That's a great name. As you can see on screen, the BFFB is a gargantuan Flipper Zero board, probably one of the largest Flipper Zero boards available. The reason for its size is that the BFFB is Just Call Me Coco's do-it-all solution for the Flipper Zero peripherals. It features dual CC1101 chips for both 433 and 900 megahertz, just like the Gemini Dream. It also has NRF24, ESP32 for Wi-Fi, and GPS. The board really can meet all of your sub gigahertz and Wi-Fi needs. So if you prefer to have all of your Flipper Zero peripheral options on one board, this would definitely be the board for you. Going over to the Just Call Me Coco website again, we can see the Flipper Zero BFFB comes at a cost of $146, not including shipping. Again, currently the BFFB is sold out, so the way that the Just Call Me Coco website works is that for a lot of their items, they'll sell them in what they call drops, which means that every now and then they will announce that there will be a drop of these devices, and for a limited time, or until at least they sell out, you'll be able to buy the devices, and then the devices will remain sold out until another drop comes in. The drops happen on a very regular basis, and you can find out more details and find out when the next one lands by checking out the Just Call Me Coco Discord. I'll leave a link in the description. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full review on the Just Call Me Coco BFFB. Last but not least on what I think are the best Flipper Zero boards of 2025 is the AWOC Dual Touch version 3. Now in my case the Dual Touch version 3 that I have on screen is the Talking Sasquatch Limited Edition. The AWOC Dual Touch version 3 has two onboard ESP32 chips, one that powers the screen and one that connects to the Flipper Zero. It also has onboard GPS in the form of a GPS ceramic antenna built in. And as you can see, there is one Wi-Fi antenna for each of the ESP32 chips. One of the purposes of this board is for war driving. You can simultaneously war drive Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at the same time when plugged into the Flipper Zero. The GPS can be toggled on and off for both ESP32 chips via the dip switches located on the back of the board, as you can see just here. The GPS can be ran simultaneously to both chips. By default, all switches will be flipped to the on position. The board is intended to monitor your network and should not be used to transmit. Again, I won't go into too much detail on this board as I have done a previous video reviewing the device and going through the firmware installation. And as I said in my review, the Dual Touch V3 is an absolutely beautiful board. The PCB is designed beautifully and I absolutely love the transparent case. Going over to the AWOC website, we can see that the Dual Touch version 3 is $160 and is available to buy. And going over to the shop, we can see that the AWOC Secret Source, which is the Talking Sasquatch Limited Edition of the Dual Touch V3, is still available. To be able to buy AWOC Secret Source, all you have to do is guess the magic word. To find out the secret word, you can check out AWOC's Discord server, which I'll leave a link to in the description, or AWOC's Instagram, which I'll also leave a link to in the description. As an honourable mention, I thought I'd also mention the official Wi-Fi dev board for the Flipper Zero. As you can see on screen, my Wi-Fi dev board is sporting a very beautiful case by Just Call Me Coco in a very beautiful colorway with their logo on the front. Now, the official Wi-Fi dev board by Flipper Zero is only capable of Wi-Fi. It is not capable of Bluetooth. Out of the box, the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi dev board comes with basic firmware which is mostly designed for testing. To take full advantage of the board, I recommend installing either Ghost ESP 
or Marauder firmware, and you can do that using online web flashers such as ESP Terminator or Easy Flasher. Today we've been looking at what I think are some of the best Flipper Zero boards available in 2025. But as well as the Flipper Zero, we also now have an alternative which also runs Flipper Zero firmware in the Kizu V4B, which I've also done a previous video on. As you can see on screen, the Kisu V4B is now looking a little bit different now that it's sporting one of Tron Case's beautiful Kisu cases. The case really does make the Kisu V4B feel more complete, and I will release another video soon going through full instructions on how to install the case. And I've also had a few questions in my comments asking about the GPIO ports. Now I've not modified my Kisu V4B yet, but if we go around to the back here we can see that we have cutouts for installing GPIO pin headers. And we also have a cutout for installing an SMA antenna connector. There are multiple variables of the GPIO pin headers that you can install, including ones that come straight out, ones that come out at a 90 degree angle, and you can either get them to point up or down. And you can also get them at variable lengths. So you really do have multiple choices on how you install your GPIO pin headers, giving you multiple variations for how the board's installed to the board. For example, I've had some comments where some people want it underneath or flat on the back, with the different GPIO pin headers, you can achieve all of those different variations as the cutouts have been specifically placed on the back for that convenience. Included with the case is the case itself, the silver buttons, the red power button, and the screws to affix the case. It is also worth noting that with the Kizu V4B, there does seem to be some variation in the screen height. As the case is built to very tight tolerances, if you find that your screen sits a little bit too high for the case to be installed, there is a very easy mod that can be done which I'll show you in an upcoming video. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos from Noble Tech, hit that subscribe button. 2025 has been a wild ride for Flipper Zero mods. Whether you're scanning, spoofing, or scripting, these boards unlock new possibilities. I've linked all the products shown in today's video in the description. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more hands-on hacker gear, and if you enjoyed this video, give the video a like. And remember, stay curious and stay ethical. I'm Og, and this is Noble Tech.